Good morning, Christchurch family. I'd like to welcome you warmly to this service in these unusual times. And yet it is becoming almost normal not to be talking face to face, but through technology. Thank you for tuning in wherever you might be. It is right to worship our God together and hear his word faithfully preached. Please use this time to reflect on all our many blessings. Hear God's word and be encouraged. I'm going to ask Pat to come up and pray for us. Good morning, everybody. Let us pray together. But first, I'd just like to read a couple of verses from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 35 tells us, Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us join together in a time of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we bring you our praise and worship this morning as we approach your throne of grace. You are sovereign over all things, Lord. You are holy and highly exalted and live in unapproachable light. And yet, because of Jesus, our Lord, we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins, and are personally welcomed into your presence. Thank you, Father, for your measureless grace. We are so mindful of all your goodness to us in this past week. Your mercies have been new each morning. Your provision has not failed. Your strength has been sufficient. You have protected and sustained us comforted and encouraged us with your word and through each other. You have also shown us the beauty of simplicity and the deeper peace and satisfaction that comes from seeking your face in the solitude of our, of our isolation. As we read from your word in Romans, we have not been separated from your love, not even for a moment. Heavenly Father, as we go into another week of lockdown and uncertainty, we ask for your day-by-day -day guidance, calm our fears, especially for our loved ones, and help us to keep our eyes fixed on you at all times. We bring our beloved country before you, Father. We pray that you would guide our president and his ministers as they shoulder immense responsibilities. Give them godly wisdom, calm and clear-headed decision-making as they navigate us through this storm. May they truly seek your face in the enormity of their burden. And Father, how we pray for our fellow South Africans, so many desperately needing your touch, so many who are heartbroken and crushed in spirit, lonely, confused and afraid. Please meet each precious soul at their deepest point of need today. As we repent and call upon your name, would you hear us and heal our land. May your light of truth blaze forth upon our nation. 
and may all the glory be yours. Indeed, may your kingdom come and your sovereign will be done or in all the world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, church family. The reading for today will be taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. A time for everything. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Greetings, Christ Church family. It is good to meet again together in this situation. And greetings to those who are part and parcel of our YouTube around the globe. It is good that you've joined us again today. Let me pray as we start. Father, we pray that you will indeed help us in these difficult times to remember that you are still in control and that you are guiding us through all this. This, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it has been said many times that change is the only constant thing in the world. And so many changes are taking place in our lives at a moment. And a lot of these changes are forced on us by something so small that we can't even see it with our naked eyes, like COVID-19. This virus has changed everything we know about our lives and about ourselves. It has changed our plans as a church, CCH. We started the year with a great plan of Reach 2020, where each person was going to reach at least 20 people with the gospel. We had gospel connection. We had Connect 2020. We had all kinds of ideas of reaching many people with the gospel. Well, that at the moment is sitting in the back seat. Our Bible studies are still in recess. And we are not doing much because of the lockdown in our country. Your business plans, I'm sure they are changing as we speak. The schooling has taken a different direction. So many of our schools, even public schools, they are trying to go online. Universities gone full on online. Things have changed. And the way we understand education is changing. And it's changing big time. For a longish time, there shall be no handshakes, there shall be no hugs, but waves. We'll be waving at each other. This year we've learned a couple of new words. You think about it. Coronavirus. COVID-19. How about Bluetooth hug? These are words we're using at the moment to, to, try to learn to live in this challenging life. Most of us have to spend so much of our time at home. And I think in the last five weeks, 
I spend more time than I have in the last 10 years. And probably the same with me. And I, for one, I don't remember watching so much TV like I've done in the last five years. You read books, you read novels, and I think those who read magazines, you've gone through all your magazines. Because we locked up, we are at home. So much is changing. It's change, change, change. And the passage we look at this morning, I think it's a very encouraging passage. Passage we looked at earlier this year. Ecclesiastes 3. But we are told that there is a time for everything. And that a season for every activity under the sun has already been decreed by God for us. In other words, God has pointed the times and the events for your life and my life. And some of these will be happy times and some of them will be sad times. Some of them will be times where we celebrate, but some of these times will be times where we mourn. We are called in this passage to really learn to trust God and to take each day as a gift from God. Our God is sovereign, and the Bible tells us that our God has a reason and a purpose for all of us. From the beginning to the end, God is in control of your life. From the time you were born to the time you die, God will still be in control of your life. Nothing would happen to you without God's knowledge. Nothing will take God by surprise. You know, even this coronavirus, it has taken us by surprise, but it hasn't taken God by surprise. God allowed this. And this is just a part of our story. I love the way verse 11 of this uh, chapter, chapter 3 says, God has made everything beautiful in its time. God has made everything beautiful in its own time. So, when God gives us the examples from verses 2 to 7 about all the different times, you must remember this. God is in control of all those seasons. So what do we do with all the change that's taking place at a moment in our lives? How do we deal with it? And here's the thing. You can't stop it. And you can't wish it away. This COVID-19, you can't wish it away. It's here and it's affecting our lives big time. But we can choose how to respond to it. We can choose how to deal with this change. One of the things we have to do is to make real changes ourselves because of COVID-19. And this is the time for us to break down old habits and to learn new ones. This is the time for us to get rid of some habits in order to learn new ones. It is time to cast away our fears and time to learn to trust God. Our lives would never be the same after this COVID-19. They would never be the same. Change is inevitable. And when it comes, we have to embrace it. Because if we embrace it and work with it, we can actually thrive in it. I mean, in this difficult situation, what we do with the time at hand would make a huge difference in how we come out on the other side of this lockdown. Think about our physical growth. Our children, babies, and their little fellows, they crawl. But as soon as they learn to walk, they stop crawling. And guys, when they are five years, seven years, you see them running along the street. They can run for the sake of it. Well, as you get older, you don't run for the sake of it. 
running is enough effort. And so we see so many people, instead of jogging, they walk, but they still exercise. And as you get even older, you learn to bring with you a walking stick to, to help you balance. You see, what that means is that we change as we go. And you can really be bitter about the fact that you are no longer able to run for the sake of it. Or live in the past that you used to be able to run. In fact, you ran Cumbric marathons and you did this and you did that. It doesn't help. You've got to change and embrace the time where you are, the season you're going through, and with a clear understanding, it will come to pass. Change may not be comfortable at times, but change is good for us. So when these changes are taking place, there are three things I would like you to really think and try to apply in your life. And the first one is this. You must learn to trust God. Learn to trust God. When change brings difficult times and, and your life really str struggles, remember this. God is with you. And God still holds your future. And where you are now is not where you will be forever. It's a season. And the season will come to pass. Your pain, your fears, your struggle, your frustration, whatever else you want to throw in that list, it will come to pass. You may be down and you may be feeling totally defeated. But you must remember that your God is not done and is not defeated. He is with you. He is carrying you and he will continue to sustain you. Don't let your current difficult time to define your future. Talk to God. Present your case to God and ask him to be your guide. Remember what God said to Jeremiah. It was a difficult time. Israel was going through a painful experience and exile was right before them. And God said to him, don't stress, even though it's a stressful time. He puts it this way. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. God said these words to Jeremiah when life was really difficult. Yes, Jeremiah, you may have to face exile. Yes, you may have to endure real difficult time in your life. But do remember this. I have a plan for you. And the plan is to prosper you, not to harm you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what is God's plan for you? I don't know. But I know that God has a purpose for your life. I know that God has a plan for you. Learn to trust him. Come to him. Speak to him as your father. And most importantly, don't assume the worst. You know, at the moment with fake news and social media stuff that we get, and everybody is just forwarding this bad news. And here's the thing, you might be tempted to think you will get coronavirus and you will die. Do remember that not everybody who contracts the virus dies. And therefore you don't have to think that when you, if you get it, you will die. Because if that is your conclusion, therefore your plans will be very different. Many of us are most likely to contract the virus. But many of us will survive it. Yes, some of us may not, but many of us will. But all of us, we've got a plan as if we will make it to the other side. Because we cannot plan to die. That is God's responsibility when we die. Ours is to plan for our future. 
Yes, that future is in God's hand, but we have a responsibility to plan. We will go through this. And many of us will be stronger on the other side. Because this will come to pass. The virus is here, but one day we will be talking about it as, do you remember in the times of that virus? It will come to pass. Yes, it is a scary chapter in our lives, but it is not the entire story of our lives. And therefore, don't let this chapter of your life to become the entire story. When you phone people and you send messages to people, send messages of hope, messages of encouragement. When you want to forward something, forward something that will build people up, something that will encourage people. Because yes, we are all going through this very difficult and challenging time, but we will, it will come to pass. But you have to make changes. And you have to make drastic decisions about your future. Yes, you have to continue to make plans for your family and things like that. God will sustain us in our new norm. But we have to plan. Learn to trust God. And as you put your plan in place, put that plan in place, trusting God for strength, for wisdom and ability to help you to bring that plan into bear. And the second thing is, don't live in the past. Trust God and don't live in the past. Ah, and this every season has its own blessings and challenges. And when God brings a season that brings wonderful things in your life, celebrate it, be thankful, and rejoice. But you must remember that that too will come to pass. And when change is difficult, you must also learn to trust God. Remember, every season that comes in our lives, it is part and parcel of God's plan. You remember Abraham. He had to leave his home, his people, his family in order for God to bless him. Joseph, he was sold by his brothers. He had to leave his home to go and live in Egypt so that he may be able to save his brothers and the people of Egypt. Moses grew up in the Bible in Egypt and, and in the palace. But when God called him, he had to leave that to learn to live with people. He could have complained. He could have really spent all of his time saying, oh man, I miss the time when I was in the palace. I miss all the good life. He didn't. He trusted God for his future. And he delivered God's people into the promised land. My brothers and sisters, the passage we're looking at, it is telling us, it is reminding us that there is time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Don't fight to regain what has been lost. Don't resist change because you are too scared of the unknown. Change is not the enemy here. The enemy is the desire to live in the past. The past was great. Celebrate it. Treasure it as a wonderful memory. But you can't relive it. It is behind you. And if in the past you made mistakes and now you're kind of like, I wish I did this, I wish I changed that. You can't live like that. A life of reg regret is not the way to go. The past is behind. Leave it behind. And walk with God as we face the unknown future, but with confidence in the God who knows our future. Learn from every experience and never forget that the Lord will remain with you. Just as he was then, and he is now, he will always be. Remember the words of Jesus. He said, 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's a promise. Don't live in the past. And finally, thank God. It might sound crazy. How can we thank God in the midst of COVID-19 and the pain and the suffering that we see? Oh, my brothers and sisters, there are so many reasons why we should be thankful to God. Pause for a moment and thank God. Thank God for your home. How is that? You could say, thank you, Lord, for our home and our running water. Because there are so many people in our country who live in informal settlement without running water. Thank you, Lord. And when you do that, don't then say, thank you, Lord, for my perfect plan. Moses warned God's people about that kind of attitude. You remember in Deuteronomy, he says, and that's Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. Moses says to his people, Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he saw to your ancestors, as it is today. And the fact that you have a wonderful home and running water, it's not because of your perfect plan. It is because of God's goodness and mercy. Thank him for it. Thank God that you have sufficient food for you and your family because there are so many people in our country at the moment who do not have food. The government is doing its best with food parcels and vouchers and NGOs are helping so many people because really so many people at the moment are going hungry. And your pantry is relatively full. And when the stock begins to really run low, you can replenish. You must thank God for that. Thank God that you are quarantined together as a family. Mom, dad, and children. There are so many parents at the moment who are at home and their children are quarantined all over the world. Maybe the daughter visited the place and she can't get back. The son went on holiday and is stuck somewhere. And you are together as a family. You must thank God for that. Imagine if your sons and your daughters were not with you. How your life would be like. We know that some of the people are going through that in our own church family. Thank God you are quarantined together. There is so much to be thankful for. These are just few examples I'm giving you. Learn to thank God. Develop the habit of gratitude. Yes, a lot has changed. And a lot will continue to change. But our God does not change. He remains the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And we can trust Him. We can thank him for his goodness and mercy. So, let me summarize and remind you my points. Three simple points. Trust God in tough times and in good times. Don't live in the past and be thankful for your blessings, which are many. May God be the strength of your heart, my brothers and my sisters. May God be your portion forever. May Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, be your comfort in these trying times. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your blessings, which are new every day. We thank you for sustaining us. We thank you for your protection. And we commit our time, we commit our future into your care. Bless us, Lord, and help us to be a blessing, not only to our immediate family, but to our neighbors around us and to many people who need help at this point in time. In Jesus' name. Amen.